Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and once again we're looking at some retro gaming action on your Apple devices. Ever wanted to relive those classic gaming moments on your iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV? Well, you're in luck! I am going to show you how to set up RetroArch, the ultimate emulator that lets you play games from a bunch of different consoles. So grab your device, get comfy, and let's jump right in! If you're as excited as we are about today's topic, show some love by liking and subscribing to Retro Pocket for more amazing content. What is RetroArch? RetroArch, the ultimate tool for retro gaming fans. Imagine having a magical app that lets you play games from almost any classic console you can think of, all in one place. That's RetroArch for you. It's the Swiss Army knife of emulators bringing together a massive collection of gaming systems into one neat package. Whether you're a fan of the NES, SNES, PlayStation, or even the Sega Genesis, RetroArch has got your back. Now, here's the cool part. RetroArch isn't actually an emulator itself. Instead, it's a front-end that uses cores to emulate different consoles. Think of these cores as plugins that allow RetroArch to mimic the hardware of various gaming systems. This means you can easily switch between playing a Game Boy Advance game to a PlayStation Classic without needing separate emulators for each system. It's super convenient. But let's be real, RetroArch can be a bit intimidating at first. It's packed with features and customization options that can make your head spin. However, once you get the hang of it, you'll appreciate how versatile it is. You can set up universal controls, apply shaders to mimic old-school CRT monitors, and even fast-forward through those annoying slow parts of a game. Plus, it supports save states, so you can pick up right where you left off any time. RetroArch is available on a ton of platforms, from Windows and Mac OS to Android and iOS, and even gaming consoles like the Xbox and PlayStation. It's open source and constantly updated, so there's always something new to explore. All right, now that you know all about RetroArch, let's kick things off with how to set up RetroArch on your iPhone or iPad. The process is pretty much the same for both devices since they both run on iOS. Download RetroArch. First, Head over to the App Store and search for RetroArch. Download and install it just like any other app. If you're using an iPhone 15 Pro, you can even set up the action button to open RetroArch instantly, which is super handy. Organize your files. Now, let's talk about organizing your files in RetroArch, a crucial step to getting your retro gaming experience running smoothly. Once you've got RetroArch installed, it's time to get those game files known as ROMs in order. Think of ROMs as digital copies of your old game cartridges or discs. To keep things legal and above board, you'll want to use ROMs of homebrew games or ones you legally own. So here's how you can organize them like a pro. First, open up the Files app on your device. Navigate through Files and open on my iPhone iPad, then select RetroArch and finally tap on Downloads. In this Downloads folder, create a new folder and name it ROMs. This is your new home base for all your game files. Keeping everything in one place makes it easier to find and manage your games. Now, let's talk BIOS files. These are essential for some games to run because they mimic the startup software of the original consoles. You, you can legally obtain BIOS files from your own hardware. Once you've got them, place these files in the system folder inside the RetroArch directory. This step is crucial because RetroArch needs these files to emulate certain consoles accurately. For those who love a clean and organized setup, you might want to create subfolders within your ROMs folder based on the console type. For instance, have separate folders for NES, SNES, PlayStation, etc. This way you can easily navigate to the game you want to play without scrolling through a massive list. Load your games. So, you've got your ROMs all organized and ready to go, and now it's time to fire them up in RetroArch. First things first, open up the app and head over to the Load Content menu. This is where the magic happens. Navigate to the folder where you've stored your ROMs. Remember, that's your digital game collection. Once you're there, pick the game you want to play. Easy, right? But wait, there's one more step. RetroArch will ask you to choose a core. Now, what's a core, you ask? Think of it as the engine that runs your game, specific to the console your game was originally on. RetroArch comes packed with all the necessary cores, so you don't need to download anything extra, just select the core that matches your game's console. For example, if you're playing a Sega Genesis game, you'd pick the Genesis Plus GX Core. Now, here's a pro tip. 
If you're unsure about which core to use, don't stress. You can try different ones to see which works best for your game. Some games might run better on one core than another, so feel free to experiment a bit. Once you've selected the core, RetroArch will load your game and you're ready to dive into some nostalgic gaming goodness. RetroArch on Apple TV Next up, let's get RetroArch running on your Apple TV. This setup is just as simple as on iOS devices. Download RetroArch. Using your Apple TV remote, navigate to the App Store and search for RetroArch. Download and install it. Sync with your iOS device. If you're looking to play games on your Apple TV using files from your iOS device, here's how you can do it, even if you're new to this tech stuff. First, it's important to make sure that both your Apple TV and your iOS device, like your iPhone or iPad, are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. This is crucial because it allows the two devices to communicate with each other. Once you've confirmed they're on the same network, grab your iOS device and open a web browser. In the address bar, type in TV Local Link. This is a special address that lets you access your Apple TV's local network features from your iOS device. It's like a bridge between your device and the Apple TV. After you've navigated to this address, you'll need to find your download folder on your iOS device. This is where you've stored the game files, also known as ROMs, that you want to play on your Apple TV. Next, you'll upload these game files to the folder accessible through the TV Local Link interface. Think of this as moving your game files from your iOS device to a place where your Apple TV can see and access them. Once the files are uploaded, they should be ready to play on your Apple TV. This process essentially transfers your games from your iOS device to the Apple TV, allowing you to enjoy them on a bigger screen. Play your games! Once RetroArch is set up, grab your controller because you're going to need it. The Apple TV remote just won't cut it for gaming. Now, launch RetroArch on your Apple TV. You'll be greeted with a main menu that has all the options you need. Navigate to the Load Content menu. This is where you'll find all your stored game files or ROMs. These should be in the Downloads folder that you set up earlier when you transferred your game files from your iOS device. Once you're in the Downloads folder, you'll see a list of your games. Pick the one you want to play. But hold on, there's one more step before you can dive into the action. Choosing a core. Just select the core that matches your game's console and your game should start up and you're ready to play. If you find that the game isn't running smoothly, you can try switching to a different core, as some games perform better with specific ones. Customizing RetroArch. RetroArch isn't just about playing games. You can also customize the app to suit your style. Customize the user interface. Up next is customizing RetroArch to make it truly yours. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned gamer, RetroArch offers tons of customization options to enhance your gaming experience and make the interface look as cool as the games you're playing. Let's tackle the look and feel of RetroArch you can change the user interface to suit your style. Head over to Settings and choose User Interface and tap Menu and pick a menu style you like. Many people love the XMB style, which is inspired by the PlayStation 3's cross-menu bar. It's clean, intuitive, and makes navigating through your games a breeze. Once you've chosen your style, don't forget to save your configuration so it sticks. Next is the dynamic backgrounds. These are like wallpapers for your retro arch interface, and they can really make your setup pop. You can find custom dynamic backgrounds online or even create your own. To add them, place the background files in the appropriate folder and configure them in the settings. This will give your RetroArch a modern and personalized look. Now, onto the controls. RetroArch lets you map your controller buttons exactly how you want them. Go to Settings and select Input and tap Port 1 Controls and you can set all controls to match your preferences. This is super handy if you're using a non-standard controller or just want a setup that's comfortable for you. Finally, there's shaders and filters. These are visual effects you can apply to your games to mimic old-school CRT monitors or smooth out pixelated graphics. Head to the shaders menu and experiment with different options to find the look you love. Customizing RetroArch is all about making it your own, so take your time exploring these features. Once you're set up, you'll have an awesome, personalized retro gaming hub. And there you have it, 
you've now got RetroArch set up on your iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV, ready to relive those classic gaming moments. Remember, RetroArch is a powerful tool, and while it might seem a bit complex at first, it's a fantastic way to dive deep into the world of emulation. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe for more awesome content, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let me know in the comments what games you are excited to play on RetroArch. Until next time, happy gaming!